as members of the public, it really comes down to a philosophical question. Some people would rather not know anything, and some people want to know as much as possible. Genetic risk is one of those things where the extra information you get from your profile would only help you as an individual understand your lifestyle, your risk in the future, especially if you prescribe new medication. So it's an interesting one because just for example, today I spent the afternoon talking to a family. Uh, my clinical practice is in uh, intensive care, uh, cardiac intensive care in particular, and I spoke to a family about their loved one who had a, a huge heart attack and was incredibly unwell. And their fundamental question is, why did it happen to him? And of course, we don't know that. We're not yet at a stage where we would understand people's risk and be able to give them individual risk. But this is the idea of genetic profiling and, and risk uh, understanding is a step towards that. It means at some point we may get to a point where we can tell people whether or not they are high risk or low risk. As an individual, it really does come down to whether or not it, it matters to you. Because anecdotally, we're all aware of the stories. For example, the Queen Mother smoked and drank all her life and lived to be over 100. And then we hear of the person who is incredibly fit, lives a healthy lifestyle and becomes unwell for unbeknown reason, whether it's cancer or heart disease. And I suppose what genomic medicine is doing is reducing some of that risk or the uncertainty around it to allow us to better understand why an individual might not do so well. We all know the numbers for the population, but it either affects you or it doesn't. And the people who are unwell don't care that there are 98% of people who are unaffected by something. It really is devastating for them. So I guess genomic medicine speaks to this idea of understanding a little bit more about your own individual risk, adding that to, you know, that's the nature component, adding that to the nurture component of how you live your life and what you do. And then, of course, a special tailored environment such as medicines. If your doctor prescribes you a, a medicine to thin your uh, blood, for example, how do you know you're going to respond to it? And that, you know, again, speaks to this idea of as an individual, you don't really care what happens to the rest of the population. It's about you specifically. And I suppose genomic medicine lends itself to that. So, and also continuing along the idea of how you make decisions about your life. So, obviously, how you live your life and the exercise you do and the food you eat is important. And that's, again, variable. So, somebody could live uh, a very, very healthy life and still develop heart disease and vice versa. And I guess try and understand whether the nutrition that you're if there's part of your daily regimen or the exercise, for example, that you do, whether try and understand whether that suited to your genetic risk or it's not would also be useful. And most people would probably benefit from having some insight into that. So it's really about understanding your own personal risk, genetics that are associated with it, and maybe even bits that don't contribute towards that.